would say is, this is the Ain't My Pony, and I am back to talk about more grimish, darkish fiction. Why do I do this? Uh, yeah, in my rambling video about cupcakes, I mentioned that it didn't really get to me, that cupcakes didn't really have a lasting effect on me, and naturally, somebody in the comments needed to point out, hey, I have a more extreme example. So Braxton Burbage mentioned to me the 120 days of blue blood. I found a dramatic reading of it on YouTube and I was like, okay, let's give it a try. So I listened to it for the first four chapters as far as the dramatic reader came. It is a story with 75,000 words in 13 chapters, so it is actually not too long. Film fiction categorizes it as tragic, sad, dark, alternative universe, mature, sex and gore. And if this wouldn't already be enough, they even did a big fat red underlined disclaimer in the content box of the story. I, did, I didn't even know that uh, Film Fiction actually does it, but they did. And this disclaimer is like, this story is rated 18 plus for graphic descriptions of necrophilia, rape, incest, torture, water sport, scat, pedophilia and jaywalking. I don't know half of this words and I don't want to know actually. Ooh, water sports. Anyone uncomfortable with these topics should not read it. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Oh yeah, this sounds like fun. And as I mentioned, I listened to the first four chapters and yes, every single chapter describes in great detail the rather bloody raping and torturing and eventually murder of all our beloved characters from Fantasy Magic by the hands of Prince Blueblood. Yes, that's really what his image needed. But now for the original question, the one that sent me to the story in the first place. Did it get to me? No! This story is really gross, disturbing, makes you question humanity as a whole. Yeah, all of that. But it didn't get to me. I, it, it was so over the top, so ridiculously gross and graphic and I was really like numbed down instantly. It was so over the top. and. The best part of the story was actually the guy who read it. He was like, oh no, they're not, oh god, oh god, no! In between reading, it was a blind reading and he was totally losing it because uh, it is a ridiculously disturbing and gross story. It is so uh, trying too hard and I don't know. Well, one aspect I probably should mention, the one thing that kind of sparked my interest was the title, The 120 Days of Blue Blood, because I was wondering, since in the story itself there is no emphasis put on time and time passing, I kind of got the feeling that the title might be a reference to something. So I just entered the 120 days in Google and instantly got the suggestion that I might be looking for the 120 days of Sodom by the one and only Marquis de Sade, the godfather of sadism. Uh, kind of literally, because the word sadist comes from his name, de Sade. So yes, the 120 days of Sodom. In this case, the title actually has a meaning because it is taking place over the course of four months and it describes the story of four very rich noblemen who kidnap a bunch of children and teenagers, male and female, who take all their daughters, a bunch of male prostitutes, callboys, I don't know, and a few older prostitutes all together in one remote castle somewhere out of nowhere and they go there for four months and the whole premise is that uh, four nobles kind of tell the most extreme stories about sexual encounters they know and the female prostitutes also tell their most crazy stories and stimulated by those narratives the noblemen start to violate 
everybody they brought to this castle, more or less. And this over the course of four months, and I just read the synopsis on Wikipedia, and according to this synopsis there is a rather low survival count. The four nobles survive, the female prostitutes, I guess. Only one of their daughters survives, everybody else gets raped and murdered. Yeah, why not? If you're a nobleman, you can do with your daughters what you want, I guess. I believe none of the children survive. Only the staff survives, the noble survives. E e even four of the male prostitutes get killed in the action. I mean, like, what? <laughs> this was kind of like, okay, got carried away a little bit there. So, yes, the 120 days of Blue Blood are based on this infamous novel by Marquis de Sade and it is probably even worse because according to Wikipedia the 120 days only sometimes became very graphic and there was a lot of summarizing while the 120 days of blue blood are very detailed and very graphic in each and every chapter. Now we come to the part where I usually recommend a story for one reason or another. And in this case, I really have to say, don't. You will not gain anything from this story. It is just ridiculously over the top, gross and disturbing, tries way too hard to really include everything disgusting in it for the sake of it and uh, I don't know. You don't really gain anything from it. If you really are into every kind of mindfuck out there, maybe read it. But I wouldn't even recommend it to somebody who is just looking for the extreme because it takes the extreme so to the extreme that it actually becomes boring again. Give this one a pass. Or maybe listen to the dramatic readings like me while playing a computer game or something because the reactions by the reader are actually uh, funny. <laughs> the only good thing I can say about this story is that a live reading of it gets some interesting reactions from the reader. But besides that, no. Just what the fuck. This is A and My Pony saying see you soon.